Debbie Webster first stepped foot on the cobbles in 1984, and in 2019, after nearly 40 years away from the show, she made a surprise return and has been stirring up trouble ever since. Today, as part of the podcast's 500th episode celebrations, I'm joined by the woman whose earlobes have borne the weight of Corrie's most outrageous earrings since Bet Lynch was behind the bar at the Rover's return. It's Sue Devaney. Sue, thank you for coming hey. on to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me and thank you for that lovely introduction. No worry, your earrings, I mean, we're obsessed with them on the podcast. My wife and I always like to see what, what Debbie's wearing. Aren't they fab? Aren't they fab? Yeah. yeah. And she's matching, you see, whatever. You see, I, I've got this um, wardrobe, give me like a little Tupperware full of earrings and I can't wait to see my outfits. And then I just go, oh, they match. Oh, they look good. But when my sister was... Um, she was a fashion designer and she yeah. was starting out and uh, she sent Bet Lynch some earrings. Oh, she, really? Yeah. You know, um, she she designed them and they were they were like doll's house toilets. Yeah. And she put them in to, to have like, you know, a toilet on a, on an earring. So so it was like she sent them in and Bet Lynch wore them in the room. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. So do you, yeah. do you ever do you have any input on like Debbie's wardrobe? Because uh, she's, she's quite outrageous in her fashion choices in, uh, at times, isn't she? She is. She is, isn't she? You know what? I, I, I take things in sometimes and I say, what do you think of this? But they, they are fabulous. Alex in, in wardrobe, she's brilliant with me and she'll just go, oh, this is very Debbie. That's very Debbie, you know. So that, yeah, we kind of go in there. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 good fun, you know, yeah. dressing up in all the uh, the the sassy gear and everything. Because I don't. It's not it's not me normally that at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. I want to go back and I want to talk a little bit about old Corrie first, and then we'll we'll move on to what's going on with Debbie at the moment. So yeah. I, I don't think anyone really predicted that you'd come back in uh, in 2019. Um, what 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 do you remember about getting the part way back in the 80s? I remember going to audition and uh, I went for, for another part first of somebody's girlfriend yeah. and Judy Hayfield, who was casting at the time. Uh, and, you know, she, she, was, uh, she was wonderful with me. And I went on the bus to Manchester to audition for Debbie. And it's one of those that you, you come back on the bus and uh, you turn corner and, and my mum's there on doorstep. She'd have the phone call. Oh, you've got the part, you've got the part. <laughs> And, and I remember, at, you know, 16, just walking into this room and just being surrounded by all these wonderful actors that I'd grown up with, you know, that yeah. I thought, oh, my gosh, you know. Um, and it was brilliant. It was so wonderful. Yeah. So you, you'd watched Corrie before then? Was it, was, yeah, it a main, was it a staple in the house? Yeah. The, you know, it was always on. It was always on, yeah. And, um, and I think, you know... When you when you're that age and you've seen people like on your screen and then you you go into work and they're all there, it's like wow, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think even more so now though, as I'm older, you know, because as you young, when you're young, things don't really phase you as much. But mm. as you get older, you go, oh, oh, I'm I'm back here and oh, oh, there's Rita and there's you yeah. know, you still get really excited, yeah. yeah. Well, was, was there anyone in particular that you did get a little bit starstruck by, or, or did it literally just was like? Like that didn't phase you. Don't tell anybody, but I get starstruck all the time. Yeah, I get starstruck all the time, and I think, oh, they're brilliant. Oh, I love working with them. I love working with yeah. them. Yeah. I, I was looking. I was looking back at the uh, the cast list in 1984, and there were some such huge names, aren't there? Some real Cory icons back then. You know, with your your Bet and your Hilda and, and Jack and Vera and everyone. Jean Alexander, she was brilliant with me. She was so was good she? with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I learned so much, but I don't think you ever stop learning. You know, I'm, 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 I'm learning so much now. Uh, Mike Lavelle is just, it's wonderful to be working with Mike again after all mm. those years, you know, it's just, and I'm so glad that they didn't recast because, mm. you know, a lot of the time they could have gone, yeah, Sue Devaney played Debbie Webster, but let's bring back somebody taller, younger and more glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> more glamorous than you. Never, because <laughs> they did that. They did that with um with uh, Sally's sister, didn't they, Gina? Because there was there was somebody else who played her back in the day, and then a few years ago they cast Connie Hyde in the role. But it, it nice. but it is not. But then also recently we had um, Tracy Bennett, of course, didn't we? He was in the show yeah. just a bit before you. Oh yeah, it's just so lovely to work with all these fabulous actors that have been mm. around, you know, and been around the block and stuff, like Tracy Bennett. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. Mm. I love working with Sally Carmen as well. 
Yeah, she's ace, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, so, Jane Hansen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when when you were auditioning, did you did you like audition with Mike Lavelle and Peter Armitage, or had they already got the parts before you, or how did that work? They'd already got the parts, and uh, I went. I think I auditioned. I don't even think I recalled because they'd call me in before to play somebody's girlfriend, mm. and didn't get that. So I just I think I just went once for the part. Unlike now, you know, you have to do. Uh, I mean, it's all on uh, your phone now. You have to audition on your phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, then you have to audition again, and then you have to meet them, uh, and then you have to go in and audition again. So it's like, you know, and, and sometimes wow. West End, you, you, you do eight auditions. Yeah, eight auditions yeah. and you don't get it. So, like, <laughs> back in them days, you didn't even have to know the lines. You just went in, had the script in front of you. You know, now you have to turn up auditioning and have it ready like you're about to go on and do it. <laughs> well, uh, so did, did yeah. you like do like screen tests together with those two as a family unit or was it just no. you know, straight in first, no? No, straight in, yeah, straight in, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, do, you, do you have any um do you have any kind of fond memories of of those days it was, you were in it about six months or so in eight seven months, seven seven eight months. months. Yeah, what what what's, yeah, thank you. What, what do you remember what any any particular scenes or I remember um working with Peter I loved working with Peter Armitage um and I I, I remember like um the fun in the green room when we were all waiting to because we in those days you had like rehearsals so mm. you had the tech run and you had the producers run and and I just remember in that green room and everybody I just loved hearing the stories you know from from men um, from all the, the the older characters and stuff yeah, yeah. and um I just remember laughing a lot as well you know yeah. I remember having that 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 time of of just uh having time on set to to figure out what you're doing and, and stuff like that yeah and, and just uh, having great fun mm -hmm. I, I can I, I must imagine I must imagine that like a new family coming into the street there might be a bit of pressure to make like a big splash and prove yourself to the viewers do you remember much about how the Coronation Street fans at the time took to the Webster's you know what I don't know no. I can't I mean I'm 54 now I am going back you know <laughs> nearly 40 years like you say so I, I just remember um I just remember having a lovely time on it and the, do you remember the lady that played uh, Phyllis oh yeah Jill Summers Jill Summers and uh and the guy that played Percy telling me about all the um the old times when they worked in uh you know the the, the music hall days and stuff like that and yeah. they the, they'd be doing part of their acts and stuff. And it was just, it was just fascinating. Uh, but I don't really remember. I mean, I suppose back then it was massive. It was, it was huge. And um, yeah, I, 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 of course it is now, but there's so much more television and Netflix mm -hmm. and um, so, but then it was like, oh yeah, Corrie, it was, you know, that was, that was, there were only three channels in them days. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, had a channel four then. No, I guess as well these days where you've got all the social media and everything, it's so easy. You I mean you get opinions fired at you all the all the time, don't you? You're, you're not on social media much, are you? But if, if you yeah. <laughs> if you want to find out what people think about you, it's pretty easy these days. Oh, it's best not to. I think yeah. it's best not to. You know, <laughs> I always remember Lionel Blair. I was um, I was really good friends with Lucy Blair, and Lionel used to say to me. Um, oh, it doesn't matter what people write. Tomorrow's chip paper. Well, of course it's not now, is it? It's no. all there to be to be seen anytime, anywhere. So I just think it's it's best not to yeah not to ask anybody's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> There's always somebody that's going to have a comment, isn't there? Yeah. Well, believe me, uh, you are Debbie's going down a treat at the moment. I think loads oh. of people are enjoying that she's come back. We we certainly love her on the podcast. Oh, I Oh, that's that's lovely. Thank you. That's lovely. So you, you said earlier it was uh, it was seven months you were in Corrie in the original stint, wasn't it? It must have been a bit of a shock that it was over so soon because weren't the Webster supposed to stay for quite a bit longer originally? You know, I, I don't know what was meant to happen. I know that uh, Peter Armitage wanted to leave, hmm. um, and so we all went. I think the uh, we 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 moved to Southampton, and Debbie. Hmm. Uh, was became a hairdresser and there was a lovely woman um who played um 
our mum at the time. Mm. And, uh, and he moved. So we, we all moved as a family and Mike stayed. And then um, I, I, I don't know how it happened. I, I don't know how it happened. But I know that uh, at the time, you know, when, you, when you're that age, seven months is a lifetime anyway, yeah, isn't I it? Guess. And it was great when I left because it opened a lot of doors. You know, I didn't go to drama school. So it was like, so then I did like my theatre training then. But it, mm. it was Corrie that, um, you know, I was able to do that because of Coronation Street. Yeah, yeah. What are some of your favourite um, projects you've had in the intervening years? Oh, um, I love working. I, I I love doing new work. I love doing new plays. Um, I... I've kind of got into musicals uh, in me the last 10 years, which I never, mm. never thought I would because I didn't train as a singer, but I just, I just love it. Yeah. Um, uh, I loved, I did a play at Bolton Octagon. Um, I've, well, I've done a few plays at Bolton Octagon, but um, The Rise and Fall of Little Voice I did. Play oh, yeah. Off. That was one of my best roles yeah do you would you uh, say you prefer stage or screen i i prefer it, i don't know it's, it's totally different genre i i think that theater you have that instant oh yeah that works because the audience tell you if it works or if it if it doesn't work and mm. um, television it's it's wherever the good parts are you yeah. know but in theater you get to um you get to be more creative, mm. whereas I think television, you know, I'm a Northern actor um, and, and that's what they'll see me as in, in telly. But actually in theatre, you go, oh, yeah, you're, an, you know, be an American today, be this, be that, you know, be, <laughs> yeah, be a child, be, a, be, an, be an older person. And you, so, you know, you can, you can kind of uh, play a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Playing that, the characters that, you know, if, if you've got a great character in telly, yeah. uh, I played a skinhead grave digger uh, for channel, in a Channel 4 film called The Real Eddie English, and that was a cracking part, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was looking down your um, IMDb page just last, last night, actually, and seeing, you, you, you've done quite a lot, haven't you? Do you think that if you'd have, um, if, if you could have stayed on for Corrie a bit longer, do you reckon you would have stayed the distance like Mike did and gone all the way through or did you did you think you're you quite glad you got a chance to break away and, and do some other bits for a while well it's funny isn't it because as an actor you you do go where the work is mm. and I think that you know if if you're lucky enough to get this is the first time apart from when I've done because I did casualty for, for mm. three years um but this is the 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 first time really in a long time, apart from if I've been doing theatre, because I did Mamma Mia for over a year, that I know what it's like to, and it's a lovely feeling to um, to have a regular wage. Because actors, mm. as an actor, you, you never normally have a regular wage unless yeah. you're in a, a series or a soap or, you know, um, or the West End for like, you know, mm. 30 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a lovely feeling that. Yeah, now that you have, yeah. One of the other things that I noticed when um when I was looking at your IMDb was um spats, which I remember, I was like, that's a blast from the past. I remember watching that when I was little. Yeah, spats, yeah. With and even like the yeah the theme tune, I could even remember it. It's so funny. It's like ah, oh, Sue was in that. Yeah, spats. don't remember much about it at all. Yeah, spats, Johnny Briggs. Uh, I did a lot of children's stuff actually. I, I, loved, yeah. I loved that time. Model Millie. And then I was I was in um, I, I wasn't in the broom cupboard, but I did a thing called But First This, which was like a presenting job mm. between children's uh, b between them um, all the young television programs. Yeah, so that was that was interesting. Quite liked my uh, my presenting stint. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, you you got the call to come back to Coronation Street after all this time away. How did that go about? What was your reaction to being asked back? Oh my gosh, I was over the moon. I was doing a show. Called, excuse my washing machine in the background. Won't you? That's Can't hear washing. it, it's fine. Right, that's all right, that's my washing machine going crazy downstairs. Um, yeah, I was just thrilled to bits because I was doing um, Calendar Girls, yeah. the musical. And I was on tour and I got the call saying, uh, will you come back for six episodes? And then I came back for six episodes. And then uh, the following year, um, I 
I started, it was the 60th uh, anniversary and they asked me back for Ben, uh, which was fab fabulous. And I worked with Mark Frost who played Ray, who was mm. brilliant. And uh, and then they just said, oh, we'll keep you a, a bit longer if, if you want. I was like, oh yes, please. And then, um, and, and I'm still there. And yeah. I'm glad to say I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still there, which is brilliant. What, what were some of the main differences that you noticed about being in Corrie in the 80s compared to now? Is it like a completely different world? Completely different. Yeah, mm. completely different. It's like, I mean, the first, I did six episodes in, in like four days, and I think, for a minute, that's, that's quick. But like now, I, I, I knew nothing. I knew nothing at all because now you get so many scripts. And, um, and it's just, yeah. Next, next. So it's brilliant. You know, I feel like I'm training all over again and like, oh yeah, learn lines, get it all plastered over walls. What am I saying today? It's marvellous. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned uh, Ray earlier, because one of the secrets that you had when you came back, well, you, you knew, no, it was a secret to the viewers that you were in cahoots with him, wasn't it? Did you, did you know that right from the beginning that Debbie would end up working for him? Or with well, him, I mean. Ian, the, the, the producer said, this is, this is going to be the story, you know, yeah. um, so so yeah, and uh, and she was a bit of a, a rum bugger, Debbie, and, and I you know I quite I quite liked that actually. Mm. You know, mm. She's and and I, I love the fact that she's a businesswoman that she you know she's very straightforward. She you know she's not frightened of saying speaking her mind. Um, mm. Basically everything I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Did you worry that being you know siding with a villain might give your character a shelf life? Because it's like if you're a villain, you're going to get soap justice, aren't you? Did you think yeah. it's good that you're able to stay? Did you ever worry you wouldn't? Well, I I I, I did think at some point in that. Um, you know, when you get your scripts, you think, oh, I'm stuck in a freezer. I wonder if I oh, I'm, I wonder if I die in this freezer. Looking <laughs> 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 so through really, the oh. Oh, oh, I hope it's not now. Yeah, but um, I think it's it, it's one of those things, isn't it? That I, I just think a contract is for as long as uh, the writers, the producers, uh, the other actors, everybody still wants you there, you mm. know? And, and when it, or, or the, you know, it's, the, it's the, the writers really, if they think, well, that's a brilliant story. And it's not, sometimes it's not to do with, you know, whether the character is, is a success or not is to do with a brilliant storyline and if it means at the end of it you know you perish then so be it <laughs> yeah yeah i guess so yeah, I, we must talk about that freezer scene by the way that you brought up what was that like to film well as a woman of certain age going through menopause i were boiling in that freezer and yeah. i had that many layers on and i was like oh oh let me you mean it wasn't a real freezer it wasn't a real freezer <laughs> a real... i think the giveaway though is you didn't see any um like uh, oh yeah the condensation in breath yeah the, yeah, no. the breath yeah <laughs> a bit yeah. warm was it yeah it was very warm very warm yeah you and mike Wilson were the first to like bubble up weren't you because that was like right in the middle of the covid yeah it was it was great actually because we'd already done um i think we'd done about nine months um maybe yeah nine months and and we two meter distance and masks and stuff so it was actually lovely when we were filming those scenes and we could be close mm. you know because it because it's like as actors that's what you you know it's, it's all about being close isn't it so mm. it's it's a it's a strange way to work and obviously we have to work that way um but doing the freezer stuff was great brilliant mm. it was great that you got some like proper character moments with between debbie and kevin as well i thought in those scenes like the dialogue about remember when we were kids and all that remember dad and i, I really appreciated that yeah yeah well I've, I, I always say that you know i think people are as they are but in a way there's always like there's not just one side to anybody is mm. there and i think with debbie you know there's a there's a there's a lot going on there there's a lot going on and i think she's you know, she has been that businesswoman all her life, and but actually coming back to her roots, I think she realised how much she missed it. Yeah, yeah. She, and she. It feels that. like she is a goodie now. I, whereas you know, two years ago, whenever it was like, oh, I think she's a bit could be a bit of a villain. I think she's maybe still got the potential to go proper bad, maybe. Oh, I do too. I do. Well, I don't, you know, I think she loves her family, and I think she's um, she's one of those that you know she wants to. She wants to do right, and in some ways, by doing right, she does very wrong. 
things. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but, but yeah, she's, yeah, I'm sure she's got, a a, pa- she's got a lot of power on the street as well, hasn't she? Because you, you still own half the street. It feels like it's a Debbie's, uh, even though we only ever see you in the bistro and, and the chariot square, you, you still yeah. own quite a bit, don't you? Absolutely. And she loves Roy's Rolls, you know, she'll go in there for a brew and stuff like that. And she'll, but actually, she owns eight hotels, darling, sweetie. I yeah. Know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, are there any other businesses on the uh, on the street you got your eye on anything you'd like debbie to you know move into next well, rovers I maybe I, quite like a, I think she's she's quite into a beauty debbie you know she might like a, a little beautician place nails yeah. probably as well <laughs> yeah. um we, we, we need to talk as well about the uh, all the horror nation street stuff from a couple of months ago as well with the uh that was great i love that week so yeah, it was full on, wasn't it? It was yeah. full on. Yeah, and yeah. Debbie was level with her arms and everything. And, and Debbie yeah. were more, she were more interested about, you know, a, a business going down. I know. Rather than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. She, she very much was uh, the show must go on, wasn't she, that week? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think she was a bit out of order with that? Do you think she's to blame for anything that happened? Well, you know, she's she's got that... She's got that business mind, so it was like, oh my gosh, you know. And I, th- I didn't think she re- she realised what was going on. No. And when she did, she just thought, well, keep going, keep going. You know, the rain and the, uh, you know, the, everybody were like dropping like flies, and she just said, keep going, keep going. You know, it's a bit like theatre, isn't it? The show must go on. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. It is. Well, it's, they've managed to um, put the blame squarely uh, back where I think it does belong on Ray now, haven't they? Between her and David. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that, you know, it's Ray's to blame. Ray, we'll bl- just blame somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you managed to, uh, uh, Debbie managed to trick him, didn't she? Because she, you were saying, oh, I know, I know the person. I found, I've contacted the person that put the sinkhole in. What, what do you think Ray would do if she found, if he found out what, what Debbie's done? Ooh. Can he do anything? I mean, he's kind of stuck there now, wouldn't he? Well, we don't know how long for, though, do we? We don't uh-huh. know how long for, which might be a little bit like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's got a target on her back, I think, when he comes out. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some bother when he comes yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, if, if he does and he does come after her, at least maybe Debbie's got the protection of Ronnie Bailey, who you've also been uh, having quite a few scenes with this year. New man yeah. in her life. Yes, well, I think she, um, I think he's a, he's a businessman, you see, and he's not from round, the, round them parts. So I think she thinks, oh, he's a, he's a Londoner, you do know what I mean? It's, yeah, mm. I think she thinks she's met a match with Ronnie, yeah. Yeah, mate. I, I, love oh, it when, uh, I love it when she, you know, she, when she gets uh, angry with these men in her life, she'll she'll use the full name terms like Raymond. Raymond. Oh, does she that thing? Oh, yeah. Just loves it, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, a, a lot of the relationship between Debbie and Ronnie's kind of played up out off screen. I found over the past six months, however long it's been, we've not seen a whole lot of you two together. But at least it has given us a bit more of a an idea into Debbie's personal life, which has been nice to see. Yeah, it's nice that she's got something going on, you know, a little mm. bit of something going on. But again, I think. You know, it'll be interesting it, to see more of that at some point. Yeah. Mm. Do you ever like? Um, have you got like any backstory, any head cannon to fill in any gaps for Debbie that maybe the, you haven't been told? Oh, absolutely. She goes to a penthouse every night. Yeah. She goes back to a penthouse. Yeah. yeah. Drink a lovely Chateau Neuve de Pape, and uh, yeah, she has a, she has a she has a ball. Yeah, but she still loves going to Rise Rolls and that uh, Rovers. <laughs> 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 um, speaking of rovers, I, well, another thing that I've liked recently is the face-offs that you've had with uh, between you and Jenny because she had her eye on Ronnie as well for a bit, didn't she? That's it. Yeah. So yeah. So it's. I think. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that's a, that's a strange one. I don't think Debbie knew how much that uh, Jenny was seeing um, uh, Ronnie, but I mm. think I think now it's that. Like, I think there's always that tension between between them, you know. Um, but and sometimes they really get on and sometimes it's like oh let's have it let's have a bit of a fight here yeah yeah we need more of that I was speaking to Sally Ann Matthews just a couple of weeks ago and she she said um yeah we need more Jenny and Debbie at each other's yeah, throat I think we do I think we do yeah definitely <laughs> yeah but we do have um Debbie and, and Abby locking horns quite a lot haven't we as well do you, do you think that they've accepted each other now I, well I think they have but I think there's always, you know, if you hurt my brother, if anything else is going on, then mm. you know, Debbie's going to be right down there. And you mean like if you had a one night stand with that lawyer over there, Imran? 
Oh. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Debbie knows nothing yet, so yes. No. How do you think, what do you think she'd do? Oh, I think she'd, oh, she'll definitely, yeah, you know, put on the boxing gloves there again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, are there any other characters on the street that you think would, um, you know, make a good friend to Debbie? Because she's got lots of enemies, it seems, but, you know, no, no buddies, actually, I don't know. Well, I think she loves a strong older woman. You know, I think she, I think she really, and and I think as well, she loves a strong woman. So it's like Leanne. You know, Debbie gets on because Leanne's a businesswoman. She speaks yeah. her mind. You know, I think she gets on with Leanne. I think she gets on. I think she secretly admires anybody that has done well for themselves. You know, and she, she, she loves Abby because she sometimes makes you know her brother very happy so mm. she you know she and she loves the feistiness um yeah it's just um I think it's the strong women that she she's attracted to yeah yeah cool um so just before we finish then it was it was announced earlier this year that um your contract had been extended to at least April of 2022 so if, if you got your way though do you think you'd be interested in staying for Corey a lot longer than that oh well you know what? I just love it. I love my job. I go in every day, drive to work with a big smile on my face. I come home, I can put my washing on, you know, I can shout upstairs to my partner. And you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not packing a bag every two minutes. Yeah. And I love, I love playing Debbie Webster. So yeah, if they, if they want me, I'd love to stay. Oh, I really, I really do hope so because um, you've you've gone down so well with the viewers these past few years. It's like oh, one of the, it's like something you never knew you wanted because when when we've been doing the podcast for nearly ten years now and like and and I, I never saw you on your first time round. I was a little bit too young then, but yeah. I was I read about the character of Devin. It's like oh yeah, Kevin's got a sister, hasn't he? But and it kind of stopped at that, and and now it's like I, I couldn't imagine the show without you. Oh, that's so kind. That's lovely. <laughs> You know, it's funny though because when um, when I did leave, I, th I think I was seventeen when I left, mm. and they, it, over the years they've invited me back. I oh think, yeah, I think about four or five times, and really? I've never, I've always been doing something else, and or it's never quite worked out and stuff. Or they they had the storyline, then it got scrapped. So, and actually, I think, you know, now, um it just feels right the time feels right so it's it's just wonderful yeah yeah well long may it continue and I, and I hope as well you get some proper Debbie Debbie stories because at the moment I think you've been on the periphery you've like been in Debbie uh, in Kevin's story you've been on the the Horror Nation Street story but we need a, a full-on Debbie story I Debbie think story. find a bit more about her Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think Debbie, Debbie goes through menopause. That's what we need. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can do that. I know I know a lot. Yeah, I don't need no, to research you. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, Sue, it's been so nice speaking to you today. Thank you so much oh, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank really, really you. great to hear more about, you know, what makes you tick. And um, I just thought, to, yeah, what it's been like to be back after so long away from the show. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank no you. No worries. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye, love.